in Walter Jackson. I used to be a cowboy. I'm now 80, 87 years old. I was born on the Quarter Circle U Ranch in, in uh, northern Montana, in the Great Falls area. I was born. My father came up with a herd of longhorns from Texas. blacks who had been brought to the Texas frontier as slaves and servants. But after emancipation, blacks migrated to the West in great numbers as free men. Between 1860 and 1895, over one-third of the cowboys who worked on the ranges from Texas to Montana were black. As cowboys, they fought Indians and cattle rustlers, enduring hot summers in Texas and cold winters in Montana. Our story is about some of the first blacks to travel south by Northwest. This documentary is a simple collection of just a few of those stories, designed to illustrate some of the incidents that took place in the early years in this part of our country. Some of these events have already been documented or have been recorded from letters, diaries, and annals. But much of the material here is recorded for the first time, as told to us by Walter Jackson. seasoned black cowboys by the end of the Civil War, and they were among the first to be hired. They were well paid for their skills. One such cowboy was George Thatcher. He could handle almost any situation that came his way. He was just naturally good. Good morning. Good morning. Breakfast bar ready? All right, you guys, out of the south. Come on, let's hit the road. Come on, get out of there. Hey. Come on, hit the road, get out of sight. Come on, get out of there. You mean you let that Indian get away with killing our steer? What are you carrying that six shooter for if you aren't gonna use it? That you don't, that you don't do nothing unless he has a reason. I know that. 
It better be a good one, too, because the boss is going to be mad. Let him talk. What do you think, Thatcher? I lived for six years with the Kiowa. I learned a lot about Indians. Learned their language. I guess um, I even learned how to respect their ways. They taught me everything they is to riding, roping, hunting. <laughs> you know what they uh, call me? Wasichu. You know what it means? <laughs> White man. Ah, oh, besides that, that, that brave, he was hungry. He didn't care about the, about nothing. He didn't care about that one scroungy steer. Besides, this, this, this land out here belongs to them. It ain't been settled yet. It's not all of it anyway. And you know what? He's seen herds of buffalo slaughtered by y'all just for enjoyment. That still ain't no cause to give our cattle away. They're still just savages. That's what they called us till recently. All right, you guys. If you're gonna get anything to eat around here, get with it right now. We got work to do so we can get out of here. George Jackson, Walter Jackson's father, was a young cowboy who had much to learn and looked to men like Thatcher to gain the experience that would make him a skilled hand. Hey, boy, what are you doing with that old plug? I thought you really preferred the horse we call Freedom. Well, I do. But right now, I'm giving Freedom a rest. A rest? I just saw Freedom. When Carl gets through with him, he's really going to need a rest. There were times along the trail when trouble had its run of the day. It seems that more than once, a young man would allow his personal pride to cause him to act in haste. This often ended in the harsh experience that would make the boy into the man, if he was lucky. Kill him, I'll kill you. Put it away, Smith. That George sure does like freedom. Freedom belongs to XIT. But I broke him. I trained him. I named him. He's my horse. Settle out on your own time. We got work to do. I want to settle it now.
Get on that horse. Keep right on riding. Keep right on riding. This event carried George away from the herd to his first lesson. He mounted the horse and rode aimlessly for two days. He had no gun because he could not afford one. Let's look what we got. They found the gold. We got it. You remember that, right? I don't get it. Uh, 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 all by ourselves. Uh. <laughs> that company, Bertha. How long have you been found this, Bertha? <laughs> watch him, Bertha. Watch him, watch him. I'm hungry. Where's he? He's hungry. Uh, what do you say? Think we get trusty? We ain't got nothing but some beans. That's okay. I'm just hungry. Can we give me some of our beans, Bertha? Bertha says all right. Okay. Okay. Come on up here. Slow down. Okay. Don't you start nothing. Okay. Come on up here. Get down. Get down. What? They see if you got a gun. Put your hand up there. Okay. Get on. Get over there. Stop right there. Stop. Stop, I say. You hear me? Says, says, all right. All right. Long way from home, ain't you, boy? Lost, ain't you? Where are you trying to go? I don't know. I came here from Texas. We heard in Calus from Texas to Montana. Came up with the XIT Ranch. I had a fight with this man. So I just left. So you left, huh? <laughs> yeah. Hey, there's sure some good beans you got here. Well, I reckon you better be eating your fill, because there ain't enough beans for me and you and Bertha, you hear? All right. You want to know something? What? I sure am glad to see you. I mean, I didn't think that there were no more color folks out here, except for the color folks on the drive. I'm glad to see you. I reckon you're right. Only it's colored somebody I know of, Mary Fields. Works over in Montana, Cascade. Works for the Indian, Indian kids or something. 
Do you mean to tell me you came way out here by yourself? You ain't got no gun, no food. Say, uh, said you came from Texas? Oh, yeah? <laughs> came from Texas, huh? Uh-huh. What are you going to do? Where are you going to go from here? Don't you worry about me. Me and Bertha now, we all right. Now, we get along just fine. But, uh, ain't no place for you to go, boy. Quit funny me, boy. Quit, quit funny, boy. Quit funny. Me and brother, we don't like to for nobody to be funny unless you here. <laughs> we don't we don't like that. <laughs> get your beans. You want them back? Get the beans. Get, 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 get out of here. Get, 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 get out of here. Okay. Well, I'm back. <laughs> you know, it took me a, a long time to learn how to listen. Most people listen and think before acting. All you gotta do is learn when to do which. It's good you're back. Well, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> Cattle are strung out. Better go get them. Right away. You're going to be all right. High times of the American cowboy lasted a short span from just after the Civil War until the mid-1880s. 1883 and 1884 were the biggest years along the Texas Trail. After 1884, the cattle drives began to fall off. During this brief period, the number of cowboys who rode the cattle trails across the Great Plains totaled no more than 40,000, and nearly one out of every three was either Mexican or black. Most of the cattle drives push herds between 1,000 and 2,500 head. But there were some record drives that ran as high as 150,000 head with 150 cowboys. Well, I'll tell you, if I was you, I'd send all them Negro hands back south. They're more at home down there. What do you mean they're more at home down there? Well, they're good enough workers. But I can't stand them acting like they're my equal. On the cattle drive, the further north we got, the more uppity they got. Well, I tell you, Bill, you know, Montana's just starting to grow, and it's going to take lots of men, all kinds of men, to settle her up. Now, all that we're going to ask is that they want to stay here and grow with us. 
You know, we're going to eat all kinds of bronchbusters and homesteaders and, and cowboys. You understand? Now listen up, men. The Montana XIT needs four hands and a cook. It pays $50 plus board and bed. Now it works pretty hard and it does get mighty cold up here. But the grub's good and you can't get that kind of money down in Texas. I wouldn't freeze my hide up here for a hundred. Yeah. Well, I heard it gets so cold down here. It gets way down below 40 degrees. You know what I heard? I heard a man lost half his herd. He lost them standing up. They were frozen. <laughs> Well, I think I'll just have a look around, see what this country looks like. They tell me this place is even smaller than Austin. You know, with a little money, I could quit eating dust. A couple of years, buy myself a little saloon. I think I'm gonna like Montana. Put the Sam Hills in Montana. You boys decide to stay? Well, me and George know, Charlie, we're gonna head on towards California. Probably no gold left out there, but the weather's warm and probably plenty of jobs. You heard me hollering about needing a cook. Uh, you interested? Well, you know, I'm sort of partial to warm weather. Well, I might make it worth your while. How much worth my while? Well, let's see. $53 a month every month. Make it 55 and you got yourself the best cook this side of the Mississippi. Well, Newt, what about you? Texas is where my family is. I got to go back. Besides, I ain't about to freeze my hide up here. Wages generally ran about $30 a month for cowboys, a little less for horse wranglers, and the trail boss got about $100 a month. The cook's wages varied somewhere in between, depending upon how good he was. Ma? Ma? Mama? Look! What's the matter? Indians coming into town! Shush up, Jason. Those aren't Indians. Those are colored folk. They probably came in on the cattle drive. Colored folk? In 1895, the XIT ranch in the Texas Panhandle brought up three herds, and that was the last of the Texas Trail. After the cattle drive, some blacks would travel on into the region, hoping to find a friendly town, looking for a place to spend their hard-earned money. Later years, my mother came up and my grandfather came up uh, from the Indian, came up from the Indian t territory with the Quaker family. My grandfather was raised by a Quaker family in, in, in the Indian ter territory. My mother ca came up with him. My father married my mother and just uh, three months, just three months before I was born, my father was killed. I never saw my 
father. He was killed on the quarter circle you you ranch. So I was from that time on I was raised on on the ranch and I was mother and I was taken in just as one as a, as the family. The Willison, the uh, George Willison was the owner of the ranch. He came from the up and around Pendleton, Pendleton, Oregon, down down in that country. So he took he took charge of me, and I was raised. He raised me around just like I was, just like I was his boy, and uh, I, we were just raised as, as part of part of the part of the family. The basic tool of the cowboy was a plains mongrel called the cow pony. He was half wild and most always honorary, but he was practical and a sturdy breed of animal, like the one being broken. Most cow ponies came from the open rangeland and were odd collections of wild mustangs. There was no time for pampering. The horses were given just enough care to keep them working the herds. Most of them stood from 12 to 14 hands high and were fed nothing more than range grass. With a few good cowboys and a couple of days, you could break the wild spirit of a corral full of mustangs. Using the lessons of fear and respect, the horses would never forget. black cowboy is still being documented. Walter Jackson, our character host, has provided the rich details for the story you've just seen through the events and journeys of his father, George Jackson. George Jackson was just one of the many black cowboys in our American heritage. Some other names of black cowboys to be remembered are George Glenn, Thornton Biggs, Albert Wellhouse, Bronco Sam, Jim Simpson, Joe Proctor, Bob Levitt, Newt Glendinnan, George Fletcher, Old George, Carl Smith, Carl Christian, Tom Christian, Jim Brooks, Napoleon Warrior, Tracy Thompson, Jim Perry, Henry Beckwith, Jim Keller, Ike Word, Joe Tasby, Al Jones.